Greetings and welcome to the channel. This is Michaela from Team Retro, where we like retro games and the devices that bring them to us. So, you fine members of my audience, you wonderful subscribers, you newcomers to the channel, you are getting a two for one special today. I uploaded a video this morning on the Mojan Aether and we did a review of this controller. Well, I'm trying to get some videos out of the way because now embargoes are being lifted and there's new stuff coming in and it's coming in hot. So I want to make sure that I get as much content out to you as I can while I'm off from work this week. So in this video, we're not going to talk about the new hotness. We're actually going to talk about breathing new life into something that is a little bit on the older side. And we're going to do that with the original gangster of the Z1 Extreme, the ROG Ally. I've owned a couple of ROG Allies in my time since creating this channel. And this is actually the third one that I have purchased. I purchased this because JSO reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to cover their 65 watt hour battery mod. The battery was the one thing about the ROG Ally that I really did not care for because it did not last very long. Going from a 40 watt hour battery to a 65 watt hour battery is an absolute game changer. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how doing a couple of modifications, changing out some face buttons, putting in a new battery, maybe getting a new case, and perhaps even a new hard drive with a new operating system, could actually take something that's old and dated and breathe some new life into it for a lot less than going out and buying a new x86. So let's dive in and get to work. At time of recording, you can pre-order a 65 watt hour battery direct from JSO for $79.99. That comes with a replacement backplate, heatsink, and additional accessories and tools. The battery and thermal upgrade kit was sent to me by JSAW for the purposes of this tutorial. There are also other accessories that I purchased with my own money that I used to modify this ROG Ally. And I'll put links in the video description for everything I installed. However, the primary focus of this video is going to be this battery mod. And as is always required when I accept review samples, all opinions are my own, I'm not being paid, and they are not seeing this video before it is published. Now the box they sent me says RGB transparent backplate, but I think that's only because I received a pre-production battery and your unboxing situation might be a little bit different. Inside the box, I received the battery replacement with a sticker, a screwdriver, some accessories, including replacement caps for the back buttons, as well as the joysticks, different screws for the back plate and the battery, and a pair of flush cutters, because there is a part of the ROG Allies plastic we will need to cut to get this battery to fit. And of course, we have the back plate itself. So I wanted to make this a more PlayStation-centered unit, so I also bought a two terabyte hard drive from Amazon, as well as some back replacement face buttons that have the PlayStation icons. Links will be in the description. The ROG Ally itself was also purchased with my own money. I was able to get a Z1 Extreme model for about $400 from Best Buy. Yes, I know, I have a problem. Let's not focus on that. Well, this calming, chill music by my friend Now the Nightmare is playing, let me show you how to get into this unit and complete this modification. While this kit does come with the necessary tools, I do recommend you pick up this iFixit kit from Amazon. This is the essentials kit and will give you screwdriver bits for pretty much the most important screws in electronics. It's not that expensive and it is definitely worth your investment. So now let's start by unscrewing the six buttons that hold the back cover in place. Then, 
we can use a guitar pick to gently pry the back cover off. I usually start around the trigger buttons and work my way around, gently unclipping the clips along the way. Now before we go any further, let's disconnect the battery by gently pulling out the connector. Probably not a good idea to pull up from the wires like I did. Try to remove it from the connector end using tweezers if you need to. Now we can carefully remove the ribbon cable going across the battery to the two joystick assemblies. The next step is to remove the battery by unscrewing the Phillips screws that I have circled on the screen. Once the screws are out, the battery should just come right out. Now, if you're only doing the battery mod, you can skip ahead in the video to the timestamp shown on the screen in order to install the new battery and the new backplate. But if you're ambitious and you wanna swap out some other parts, keep watching. Now it's time to disconnect the joysticks. We'll start with the right joystick by removing the screws circled on the screen. Carefully disconnect the ribbon cable and then remove the joystick assembly. These three screws are part of the many that hold the motherboard in place. So let's remove these as we will have to move the motherboard out of place in order to access the face buttons. Working our way from left to right, let's remove two more motherboard screws Head on over to the right side and let's remove these two screws here. Now let's disconnect the left joystick. Again, remove the appropriate screws. And then we'll need to carefully peel the sticker so that we could remove the attached ribbon cable. Carefully remove the joystick assembly, exposing more motherboard screws, which we will also have to remove. This is a very stubborn motherboard, so we will also need to unscrew the two fans. Thankfully, there is some wiggle room to where we don't have to disconnect them. We just need to move them out of the way. And there's one more ribbon cable here at the bottom left. And once we carefully disconnect that, this stubborn motherboard will finally start to wiggle out. We don't need to remove the entire thing. We need to move it just enough to be able to access and remove the face buttons. Using tweezers, put the new buttons in place, making sure they go all the way in and are facing the right way. This will be the hardest part of the whole modification due to the way the ally is designed. So take your time. Once you are confident the buttons are in place, we can begin the long process of reassembling this unit. Let's put the motherboard back into place, making sure that the bumpers are aligned with their actuation points. Then. We could reconnect the ribbon cable on the bottom left, as well as the fans. Before going any further, let's just test these face buttons to make sure they work. We seem pretty good to go, so now we could start the reassembly. Let's start by replacing the two motherboard screws on the right, then we could connect the left joystick. Reattach the ribbon cable and screw the joystick assembly back into place. Now, we could start to work our way backwards, reattaching the motherboard screws we removed earlier. Once those are back in place, we can now reattach the right 
joystick. Since I'm going to be doing a Bazite build for this device, I'm installing a 2TB 2230 hard drive. Unfortunately, 2TB is the highest we can go with this device because we can only put in a 2230 hard drive with this build. This should be more than enough though, combined with a decent SD card. Now, after all that, it's finally time to install the battery. And for those of you who are only doing the battery install and skipped ahead to this moment, welcome back. It's time to grab those flush cutters. There are two parts of the front shell that we need to cut to accommodate the new battery, starting with this piece of plastic on the left side. Just be very careful not to accidentally cut any wires around this area. Then we need to make another small cut here on this piece of plastic on the right side. With those small modifications made, we're ready to install the new battery, which should now fit in place where the old battery once sat. Now I'm going to use the new screws that came with the unit to secure the battery in place. The bags holding the screws have pictures that show you exactly where they go. Once everything is screwed in, we can now connect the new battery. This big black thing is a giant heat sink to help with thermals, and this just sits in between the two fans. Now we could reconnect this ribbon cable that runs across the battery to the two joystick assemblies. Looking back at this footage, I should have put the sticker on first, and then attached the ribbon cable, I went the other way around, which I don't think is correct because the darn sticker even shows where the ribbon cable is supposed to go. Nevertheless, having completed the front assembly, we're now going to set this aside and move on to the back shell where we can remove the back buttons and the left and right triggers. M1 and M2 are held in place by a screw and a spring. Whatever you do, don't lose the springs. I don't know where to get replacements. Once disassembled, the buttons will pop right out. Then we could remove the left and right triggers by taking out the screws holding them in place. Now we can reconnect these buttons and triggers to the new back plate. Just make sure you put the springs in first, then screw them in. Again, be careful because replacements are hard to find. Once the buttons and triggers are in place, we could finally reassemble the unit. Once everything is buttoned up, let's plug the unit in and turn it on to see if it works. As you can see, mission accomplished, and now we have a fully modified ROG Ally. Now that everything is put back together, there are a couple of additions I want to put on to finalize the unit. The first thing is a case. I purchased a JSAW case from Amazon that I feel is a little bit more comfortable than the D brand kill switch. My only gripe about this case is that the kickstand isn't as good. So I might go back to a D brand in time or find another option. For now though, this is doing the job. As a final touch, I added a PlayStation logo sticker to the case. All right, so now that we have our Bazite build up and running, Let's take a look at how well this battery performs. And let's start at a silent 10 watt TDP just here on the home screen. And we are at 84% battery and we are estimating seven hours at eight minutes just idling on the home screen. So now we could take this a step further and we could drop down to a custom eight watt TDP and we're gonna turn off TDP boost. And so here's Excite Bike. Let's go ahead and take a look at our projected battery life. Here at an eight watt TDP, we are anticipating about seven hours and four minutes of NES gaming 
from 83% to needing to reach for a charger. Now, because this is a PlayStation themed ROG ally, we have to play some PSP. So here I am playing Loco Roco at a 4X resolution, which would be about 1080p, and we are playing at a silent 10 watt TDP. If we go ahead and look at our projected battery life at 83%, we are still expecting seven hours and 18 minutes of PlayStation Portable gameplay, at least with a lightweight game like Loco Roco. Here is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the arcade game, playing this through the Kawabunga collection on PC using Steam. And again, we are here at a silent 10 watt TDP. If we check the estimated battery life, we are still at about seven hours projected battery life at 82% and it actually just shot up to seven hours and 11 minutes. So that is more time than it would probably take to beat this game. So let's kick things up a notch with Yakuza 5. We are playing this game at ultra settings and we are getting a good 60 frames per second. This is a fairly easy game to run on the ROG LIX, especially the Z1 Extreme model. And if we take a look at the performance metrics at 81% at a 15 watt TDP, we are anticipating about an hour and 49 minutes of game time before having to reach for a charger. My bad, an hour 46 minutes. Finally, one more stress test would be Final Fantasy XIV, one of my favorite games to play on the ROG Ally. We are running custom settings for a Steam Deck so that we can get a decent graphics to performance balance. So we are at a 15 watt performance TDP. We can probably even kick this down to 13 if we wanted to. And we're getting about 43 frames per second here in just a regular town. And if we take a look at our projected battery life at 80%, we are expecting about an hour and 49 minutes before having to reach for a charger. Now, believe it or not, I used to have to, on an ROG Ally, put this down into silent mode, drop down all the graphics settings to their lowest to be able to get an hour and a half of battery life. So being able to bump up the graphics and get a little bit more performance and still get a good two or so hours of battery life playing this game, I would definitely say that this is a massive improvement. This battery is definitely making me use the original ROG Ally so much more than I used to in the past. But let me know what you think in the comments below. And please feel free to continue the conversation on the Retro Handhelds Discord, where you can find me hanging out in between videos. And if you want to support the channel like these wonderful people on the screen, you can do so by going to my Patreon page. Links for all those places will be in the description. But that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and please be sure to like and subscribe if this video was helpful to you in any way. Every smash of that button helps the channel grow and allows me to get more content out to you. But until next time, bye for now, and don't stop believing.